Now again, we have to be able to look at these reagents and figure out what electrophile is going to end up attached. And again, you should know the mechanism, but you wouldn't normally draw it unless you were asked for it. So let's just try drawing the product here without the mechanism. Looks like both of you had a little trouble figuring out what the electrophile is going to be. Now, basically, in this case, again, this is just the catalyst, and this is the actual electrophile over here. This is the actual electrophile. Now, one of you saw correctly that if this is receiving electrons from the benzene, it should end up with a negative charge. However, we're not going to leave it with a negative charge. It's eventually going to pick up a proton. So the ultimate product is going to be this. This is going to be the ultimate product. Unless we were actually drawing the full mechanism, we wouldn't even draw the intermediate with the negative charge. We're going to draw the protonated form. Of course, the sulfuric acid here is a good source of protons. So three hydrogens. So in, in a way, this is actually easier than this case, because this, uh, this looks more different from here. Here, we really are just adding the SO3 and then protonating it to get rid of its negative charge. This is, again, the catalyst. Incidentally, the particular combination um, that we use of sulfur trioxide and sulfuric acid is called fuming sulfuric acid. You might have heard that term used. This is fuming sulfuric, sulfuric acid. I think the reason for that is in order to increase the sulfuric acid concentration, you would actually add extra gaseous sulfuric acid. So kind of fuming in a sense. This, now, this over here now, since we put on this proton, this is now an acid. Maybe it would help to actually draw what this looks like. Here's what this group actually looks like over here. You can see that this looks like an acid because it's got a proton on the oxygen. This is what's called a sulfonic acid. This is not a sulfuric acid, but a sulfonic acid. And to be precise, this is benzene sulfonic acid. And what's the name of this reaction? If this was halogenation and this was nitration, this would be sulfonation. sulfonation. Because we didn't make a sulfuric acid, we made a sulfonic acid. Incidentally, sulfuric acids are when the sulfur is attached to four oxygens. Sulfonic acid is when the sulfur is attached to three oxygens and a carbon chain. Three oxygens and a carbon chain is sulfonic acid. Four oxygens is sulfuric acid, like we used here. Well, that's what we have here, three oxygens and then the carbon chain from the benzene. So this is not benzene sulfuric acid, it's benzene sulfonic acid. We actually already learned about sulfons a little bit. Do you remember sulfonates from last term? Sulfonates were good leaving groups. There was toluene sulfonates, mesylate, tosylate, those things. Oh, yeah. um, those, those were related to sulfonic acids. So these are not sulfonates. This is the sulfonic acid, but it's related to the sulfonates. And in all of those cases, we had a sulfur with three oxygens attached to a carbon chain. When do we say sulfon? When we have a sulfur with three oxygens attached to a carbon chain. When do we say sulfur? When we have a sulfur attached to four oxygens. Those are kind of minor points. But anyway, that's why this is called a sulfonation. You guys asked me earlier whether these reactions were reversible. And I said generally not. But this is the big exception, sulfonation is reversible. And that actually turns out to be quite important. Oh, yeah. This reaction is reversible. We reverse it with water, basically uh, aqueous workup. Water, 
sulfuric acid catalyst, and heat. So this would be a good way to have this in your notes. The forward reaction is sulfur trioxide and sulfuric acid. And then for the reverse reaction, we do aqueous workup, basically. Acid, water, and heat. So this is the one electrophile that we can easily remove. There isn't very, um, it's, it's much harder to get rid of a halogen or a nitro once you put it on, but it's easy to take this, sulf uh, this, uh, this sulfon group off, just with uh, H3O plus, basically. So the only one that's easy to remove? This is the only electrophile where, where there's a very easy way to remove it. Again, once we put the bromine on, it, there's no easy and direct, um, we're not, I don't think we're going to go over an easy and direct way to take off a bromine or a nitro group. Um, but there's an easy and direct way to take off this uh, sulfon group, the sulfonic acid group, just with H3O plus, basically. That will turn out to be important. All right, and again, there are some pesky little details in the mechanism here, uh, but I guess now we have a lot to, to go over, so maybe we won't go over the mechanism. Um, all right, okay. But um, you, uh, in general, you should be able to go straight from the starting material to the product. Um, now, this was one that I think gave you some trouble, so you might want to make, want, might want to make a flashcard so you can memorize exactly what the, the um, electrophile looks like here. Again, this is the condensed way to write it, and this is the, the full picture. skip the mechanism and just draw the ultimate product. Let's see if we can draw the product from this reaction. commonly used here, so we need to get acquainted with the common Lewis acid catalysts. If I put these numbers in here, which of these two carbons is going to end up attached to the benzene? One. Right. Now in this case, that didn't make any difference because they're, they're symmetric, uh, but in other cases that could make a difference. Obviously, the, the carbon that's electrophilic is the one that's attached to the leaving group, so we're going to attach this that's attached to the leaving group to the benzene over here. Right. That's our basic idea. Now, you're right, this is called Friedel Crafts. Now let's try to draw the product here. And again, to save time, we'll, we'll skip the mechanism and try to just draw the product.
This is also called Frito Crafts. You can see why they have similar names, because they both involve um, carbon electrophiles. Remember how we're always very interested when we find a way to form a new carbon-carbon bond. So now we have another way to form carbon-carbon bonds. 